I'd say the biggest surprise, and this was a surprise for me also, is how bad this gets in 10 years. It's one thing to understand how bad it is today, and we all point to the, the debt at $9 trillion today, $6 trillion before the recession. This is net public debt after borrowing from Social Security. Mm -hmm. That it's $9 trillion today, which seems bad enough. But even with optimistic economic assumptions, as in 4.5% GDP growth for the next 10 years, assuming Medicare, Medicaid grows at only 6% a year instead of the 10% a year it did in the last decade, assuming Bush tax cuts or the 2001 three tax cuts, however you want to refer to them, expire for people making more than 250000 a year, assuming all of those optimistic economic assumptions, the debt grows to $20 trillion in 2020. In 2021, our annual interest bill will be a trillion dollars a year. Now, a trillion dollars, tough for people to understand. We understand millions, billions. A trillion, though, the way to think about it, if you had spent a million dollars a day since Jesus Christ was born 2,010 years ago, you still would not have spent a trillion dollars. That will be our annual interest bill. So a lot of people want to point to stuff like, uh, well, it must be the stimulus, or it was those Bush tax cuts, or um, it was uh, Obamacare. I mean, there's a bunch of things people want. Earmarks, another favorite. Those are all sideshows. The real issue is that my generation, the baby boomers, are retiring. And as we work through Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, we literally crush the system. And I'd say that's the part that's not that well understood out there, needs to be understood, including by the business community. And I'd say, what can the business community do? We need to start talking to our representatives, senators, and the administration to say, you need to exercise leadership here, and it's going to take spending and taxes. So please get together, stop arguing, start agreeing. But I would not cut spending immediately. I think that would be a problem if we did that in 2011. As we start to get into 2012, though, there are things that we can be doing to at least start demonstrating to the bond market that we really are serious about getting our fiscal house in order. We don't want to become Ireland, Greece, Italy, Spain, all those countries that are struggling with these kinds of problems. We're the reserve currency of the world. If we want to stay that way, we have to demonstrate that we still have the political will to pull together instead of pulling apart. This is a time for us to pull together and stop arguing. Whether you're the Business Roundtable, the National Association of Manufacturers, the Chamber of Commerce, individual businesses calling on their legislators, everybody needs to be talking about this and saying do something, get something done. Well, I do think when it comes to being fiscally responsible, uh, some people take that as a, see, I told you you need to raise taxes. Other will say, fiscal responsibility, see, I told you you need to cut spending. The answer, of course, is that when you have a problem of this magnitude, it's going to require a compromise, which means nobody is completely happy. Nobody. To me, the only way nobody is completely happy is if there is something to do on the tax side, but I'd say even more on the spending side, because spending really is out of control right now. Well, if you look at the latest compromise, it's how we got into this problem, right? Tax cuts continue, and there's additional spending that goes on. This puts us right back where we are. So I would say maybe that makes sense for the next year because we are trying to dig our way out of a recession. But it's that kind of mentality that's got us into this place because uh, the American public, businesses, everybody likes low taxes. They also like a lot of benefits. Those two don't go together. And this is one where the American public has to be pushing on all of their legislators to say, this is unsustainable. And if something is unsustainable, as Ben Stein once said, it will stop. We have two choices here. We can let the bond market do it for us, in which case everything we talk about today will look like, wow, why, why didn't we just do that then, given what we have to do instead? Or we can do it thoughtfully and proactively today. And that's what we've hoped through this fiscal commission, that we could get people's attention to say, do it today, do it thoughtfully, be proactive, take a few hits with uh, the American public where you need to, because not everybody's going to like it, but you need to do it.